Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Synopsys with Shaolin Chen, who's going to talk today about formal sign-off. Shaolin, what are the problems with formal sign-off? Why is this an issue now when it wasn't maybe a couple years ago? Actually, it's been an issue all along. It's just that uh, people didn't know how to address it in the way that you use formal verification and you sign off the, you say you're done and then you're trying to sign off the design and the management will say, so what have you done? Can you show me in the terms I can understand? I understand what's in simulation. We have all the code coverage as well as functional coverage to measure the progress and the completeness of your verification. But informal, uh, you say your properties are proven. What does it actually mean? So that's why it prompted today's, today's talk to talk about um, how we can do this unified uh, coverage database, coverage-driven formal verification so that we can achieve a unified sign-off with simulation and formal as well. And sign-off is one of those things where is it good enough, is it done, nobody's ever quite sure, right? Yes, it is true. So we have these coverage measurements to tell us so how much we have done so you can measure the development progress as well as set a criteria, say once you reach this criteria, you are done. Why don't you draw this out for us? Sure, Ed. What are we looking at here? Yeah, we're looking at the differences between simulation and formal verification setup is really not that different. They both require constraints on the input side to drive the, to have the valid stimulus going into the design, right? They both require monitors or checkers to monitor the output and internal logic to make sure it meets the design specification. And then, and we have well-defined coverage metrics in simulation and code coverage and functional coverage. So now we need to look into, incorporate this into the formal verification. So one of the problems has always been, do you have enough assertions, right? That's true. That's the first thing you start with writing assertions, because formal need assertions to be able to verify your design using the formal algorithms to see uh, whether property holds true given a set of input constraints. So that's what we're looking at, uh, some drawings here. What are the formal metrics for sign-off? Yeah. There are certain questions I must address when I verify with formal verification. The first question would be, do I have enough assertions, right? How, how to measure the progress of my test bench uh, development? So the first thing is, I'm writing assertions as I go along according to the specification. To understand that, you can look at this drawing here. Let's say this is your design output. And from here, you can see trace back driving of, of this output. You have the cone of influence, the COI, for this output. Now think about this is the property and in your design, whether it's output or internal in your design. There is also a cone of logic that's associated with this property as well. So that's COI for this property. So the more properties you write, hopefully, and the cone of influence going to cover more of your design. So eventually, hopefully, you will have 100% of your design is in your COI, right? That is, this is a, um, a lightweight analysis, a structural analysis, it's really fast to run. It's give you a quick measure where you are in your test bench development. So that to answer the first question, do I have enough assertions, right? Now, you have enough assertions, you think, you, you, you have 100% coverage COI, now you run formal uh, checks, so new properties are proven. So what does that mean, right? So um, how much of the logic is covered by those proofs? And to know that, you have to understand that formal engines are very, very smart, very efficient. They use different uh, uh, abstractions and uh, logic partitions to cut out the logic it doesn't need. So the only subset of this logic in the COI is used. So to represent that, I will put a subset of this part of the logic that's covered by the proofs, and we call that formal core coverage. So now that you know uh, only part of the formal core uh, is, is covered in, in the design, um, but 
you, there's still logic that's outside of formal core, but still inside your COI that are, are not checked by any of the checkers in your setup. Is the problem that you have to solve based upon the density of what's on the chip? Is it the complexity of all the different components? Because we're moving into a world of, of heterogeneous computing where you have lots of different things on a design. Uh, there's not just one type of chip. Mm -hmm. Right, for sure, it's because uh, you you are writing your your assertions based on your spec, so you think you are covering all of the design. But because a formal engine only use a certain certain part of the design, so even if you think you have verified the whole thing, but there's logic outside of the cone that formal engine is not using, you're not you're not actually checking. So you need to add more of the checkers so that you can eventually reach 100% of the coverage in the formal core as well. And it gets more complicated as we move into some of the industrial and automotive applications because some of these chips have to last for 15 years under uh, conditions that nobody's quite sure what they're going to be over time, particularly for some of the AI logic. Will this address some of that? It can in a way, but may not be enough. So for example, now we've, so far we've been talking about a design functionality as per to check, right? I have not addressed anything on the input space and say what my constraints are doing, right? So one of the things you really have to pay attention, especially in the formal verification, is that you don't want to over constrain your environment. Right. So to do that, we have a formal analysis to tell you which part of your design are actually unreachable because um, of constraints. So we do that part of the coverage as well. So look at this drawing here. So the blue dots are unreachable without any constraints. So that is pointing out the dead code in the design. So you should take a corrective action to make sure you don't have any dead code to begin with. It's then it's the red dots that's really interesting here because the tool is telling you you have design, a logic in your design that's not reachable because some constraints are constraining the space so you're not reachable. So you may have an over-constrained uh, situation and that is the worst thing can happen in formal is that you obtain proof of properties um, that are in an over-constrained environment. Do you get false positives out of this by doing it wrong? Absolutely, absolutely. Meaning that I don't, we don't say it false positives, just means it's, it is uh, because you over-constrained the environment. And so what's, what do you have to keep in mind in order to avoid that over-constraining of what you're trying to prove? Yes, there are uh, several indications you can use. So first of all, from the functional side, you will see that your property may be vacuously proven or some cover properties you've written become unreachable. So that from, from the functional side, you need to, you need to safeguard, safeguard that. From the cold coverage side, that's what I'm talking about here, is uh, we're having a cold coverage, is that you want to design space to be 100% reachable with the constraints in place. Assuming that you now have a good set of metrics, are you comfortable with sign-off? Yes, if you have 100% formal core coverage and you have uh, no over-constrained uh, situation, many companies would have that criteria, say, okay, that's the criteria we have sign-off, then you can sign-off, in fact. How do you know the assertions that you're using are good enough quality? What defines that? Excellent question, Ed. Actually, 100% um, coverage does not guarantee 100% correctness, right? So there are still other things you can do. For example, uh, fault analysis can be introduced in simulation as well as informal. So we have this thing called a uh, formal test bench analyzer where it utilizes the fault analysis uh, to further stress your formal test bench environment. So the way it works is by injecting fault into your RTL all over the place and then um, uh, try to see if your environment would catch those faults. And then here I have a drawing, um, um, anything inside of the COI of any of your properties, they are 
um, activated, anything outside are non-activated. Since you already have 100% formal core coverage, you should have zero non-activated faults. So for all the activated faults, for each activated fault, actually, um, you want to make sure that some checker, or at least one of the checkers would fail, so that will catch this fault, and that fault becomes detected. So ideally, you want all of your faults become detected. And that's always been the problem with formal, right, is you have to make sure that you have everything defined that you're going to be testing for. Yes, you do, and the same in simulation as well. So sometimes maybe uh, the spec is incomplete or some corner case is not being uh, defined very clearly, so you may, you may not be able to reach that, or uh, then you may have these um, non-detected faults showing up. Uh, you didn't have enough checkers to catch them. Um, so and after you run your fault analysis, if you have any non-detected faults, you really should pay attention to that and figure out a way uh, to resolve that and say, what are the additional checkers that I need to add to make sure that my environment don't let these detect the, the, the faults go not undetected. Does this become easier as we start getting into uh, derivative types of chips because you've already run these things, things show up in the field that you didn't expect, then you come back and say, okay, we now have to test for this because we didn't see it before. Um, actually, this part is very important for like mission critical designs as well as a safety functional safety function related designs. So you want to make sure that the faults don't uh, slip through the cracks of your uh, uh, formal test bench environment. So this become very very useful, very critical. So this is pretty complex stuff. Sum this up for us really quickly if you can. Yes. Um, their coverage metrics that we talked about so far is, do I have enough assertions? And then we have uh, uh, property density or COI coverage for that, right, in a way. And then as well as formal core coverage to address that. If you ha have 100% of that and you're, you're in pretty good shape. And then the question is, have I over constrained my environment? So you have uh, different metrics to, to measure that as well. Then the third question is, how good are my assertions, right? Then you have a fault analysis to address that. So in summary, there are clearly defined coverage metrics you can use to, to uh, finish your formal sign-off process. And since it's all the same coverage metrics, you can unify the coverage uh, closure with simulation with the unified and uh, integrated coverage sign-off. Xiao and Chen, thanks for a great explanation. Well, thank you. My pleasure.